Hey guys, Votex here. Today, I present the ultimate guide to the Rake Remastered. This video is going to be split up into chapters, so feel free to skip ahead to any chapter you need. Let's get started. Each night, the Rake will come out of his cave. Each player must survive from night to day. A night lasts for 8 minutes and 20 seconds, while a day lasts for 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Players are automatically equipped with a handy flashlight and can hold shift to sprint for a periodic amount of time. Becoming damaged triggers your health bar. After a few seconds, it will restore health over time. The lower a player's health is, the slower they will move. If a player's health is under a third, the screen will start to shake and the player will start limping making them unable to sprint. If the player's health is extremely low, they will fall down and be unable to move at all. Towers and houses can be located around the map, along with a light that will deplete energy if open for too long. Once you have been killed, you are disqualified for survival and will respawn in the map freely. This character is the main antagonist of the game. It stays in the cave during the day because of its sensitivity to bright lights. It comes out at night to lurk around the forest. It can use its senses to track nearby victims by smelling the area. Rake only starts chasing you once he spots you and the heartbeat sound plays during the chase. It takes approximately two or three strikes from its claws to collapse. Players have a limited number of stamina before they can outrun the rake since it is fast. If you are with a group of people as he begins to attack you, he cannot kill you. Instead, he will strike you until you're immobilized and begin attacking the more healthy members of the group, giving you time to get away from him if one of the other players runs away with him. However, if your group gets immobilized by the rake, then he'll proceed to slay all of you one by one. Blood Hour is a bonus mode that can occur if players damage the rake excessively. If the power station makes a boom noise similar to when someone is slain, you have successfully triggered Blood Hour. When Blood Hour starts, the rake will begin to make the same movements as SCP-096 when he is angered. As the panic continues, he will get faster and faster. The entire screen will begin to start turning red while the ambient is changing. The rake is slowly increasing the speed of his animation. Right when the rake is panicking super fast and about to scream, some red rotating text will appear in the middle of your screen saying, RUN FOR YOUR LIFE. Once the text disappears, he will proceed to make a loud roar, which the entire server can hear. Rake will then begin to chase the nearest person down and slay them. Rake can see you from the other end of the map. In Blood Hour, Rake will slay all down players regardless if anyone is nearby. His speed is increased to a point that he is slightly faster than you. If he is given the chance, he'll sprint right behind you and slay you instantly. Power is not available during Blood Hour. Attempting to go to the power station and attempt to reboot the power will not work. You must wait for the night to end. The Rake can be lured onto traps, which will cause him to make a scream of pain and give players time to run. However, the time he stays on the trap is shortened. The rake will ignore all players he has slain in Blood Hour. Blood Hour may also be a target tactic by the rake, as some people die during it, and Blood Hour ends immediately afterwards. The flashlight is a basic light that all players spawn with. The compass's main purpose is to tell players where they are, and it can collaborate with the map to help players guide themselves to a specific place to ensure they are not lost. It is also useful for players that are looking for the flare gun. This does, it does not depend on power to work. The map is currently the cheapest item in the game. The map's main purpose is to give and show the main locations. It is not very useful on its own, but it can collaborate with the compass to help new players guide themselves. The watch is one of the third cheapest items in the game. Its main purpose is to tell players how much more time is left before day slash night starts. In a minute, second format. This item does require power. Vitamins are the most useful items in the game, granting the player infinite stamina for 5 seconds. Vitamins do not allow an incapacitated player to sprint. This enabled you to use the stun stick indefinitely for the time being or run away from the rake. The monitor was previously the most expensive item in the game. It allows you to view all the cameras in the main parts of the map and can be used to track the rake, but is affected by its presence. The cameras are motion sensing and when they spot motion they will track whatever is moving and display its username. It can also break the current camera you are viewing if you are watching them for too long, and it will be out of use for a certain amount of minutes. The first aid kit allows the player to heal themselves or other people if injured. Pressing the left mouse button will allow the player to restore lost HP with three uses. Like all other items, the first aid kit cannot be equipped if the player is downed. 
However, if you equip and use it before you get down, you would still be able to heal. If the rake steps in it, it will take damage and immobilize for approximately 6 to 7 seconds. Very useful for killing the rake as it only takes about 4 to 5. The trap also does 50 damage to the rake. The tracker helps a player to determine how far away the rake is from their current location. The rake has a detection range from 125 studs in the classic version. In the remastered version, it instead detects at 100 studs and pings slower. If the rake hasn't spawned or is beyond this radius, it will result in signal lost appearing on the tracker's screen. This is a very useful item for new players. A slight misconception made by some players, the rake being in its stealth mode does not affect the tracker's ability to detect the rake. Night Vision Goggles is a game pass that gives a player the corresponding item. Click to equip and press N to use. It is, very, it is a very useful game pass and is worth the money. It allows you to see the rake before he can sense you. It costs 400 Robux. This allows the player to see 5 times further. When you activate the night vision, your screen will go completely neon green for about 1.5 seconds, and it will emit a high-pitched charging sound. The stun stick is a weapon that can be found in supply drops or bought for 900 points or 720 points with the merchant discount game pass. It deals 4 to 6 normal damage and 40 headshot damage to the rake. You can use this to temporarily immobilize the rake by whacking him, but can block your wax from its front after you hit it a couple of times. The stun stick also requires power to use, like many other items. The stun stick works best when there are multiple players using it. The UV lamp is another weapon that can be found in supply drops or bought for 700 points, only in the remastered version. It's brighter than a flashlight and blinds the rake, unlike the stun stick. Although, the rake can also cover its eyes if you use it for too long. It also does not consume stamina, which is a huge benefit. If used for long enough, the UV lamp will need to recharge. You can recharge it by simply leaving it unequipped slash held and letting the power refill by itself. The voltmeter is useful for keeping track of the current power level to predict a power outage. At the shop, it says this item can be very handy for in near-death situations. The radio is an item that can only be found in the safe house on the desk in the back allowing players to communicate anywhere across the map. If your radio is on and other players talk through it, it will make a click sound telling a player is talking through it. The toolbox is essential for being able to restore the power quicker, and it also allows players to force a safe house door open from the outside. This does not run on power and can be used three times. The flare gun can be used to call in supply drops. Supply drop crates can contain six items that consist of the vest, first aid kit, tracker, vitamins, stun stick, and UV light. The supply crate can sometimes have either two or three medkits or vitamins inside. The flare gun will spawn in random locations such as the safe house or in the corner of the power plant and players should be able to successfully locate it with the compass and a paper found within the base camp, which also contains the coordinates. Or you can watch my previous video. However, if the player switches to another item whilst holding the paper, it will disappear from their inventory. Flare gun despawns naturally or it could despawn if too many players hold the paper. Once you fire the flare gun, your character drops the gun and it will slowly disappear on the ground. Shortly after, a plane can be heard passing by, dropping a supply drop shortly after. Once equipped, your max health will increase, allowing you to take more damage from the rake. It can be found in supply crates or bought for 450 points from the shop. The headlamp is a game pass item that gives you a light source, where instead of like the flashlight and being a single beam, the light is distributed in a limited radius around you. The player gets it on spawn so they don't have to go to the shop to claim it. This item was added in along with the Halloween update of 2020. It gives you a weapon to fight the rake with. You can get this by claiming it at the shop after buying the game pass. Eerie works like a grenade when equipped. The Eerie makes a breathing noise and the holes will slowly glow. After 5 seconds the Eerie will be throwable and when used the Eerie will spin upward and cause a very powerful green explosion with effects. You can claim one Eerie every day. As of around October 31st, 2020, the Eerie is unable to be purchased, but if you own the Game Pass, you will still be able to claim it and use it in-game. The upgraded flashlight is a Game Pass. If you buy the Game Pass, you will spawn with this instead of the flashlight. It is much brighter than the normal flashlight. This Game Pass costs 150 Robux. I previously made a video about all the flare gun locations, so if you need to find it, I recommend you go watch that video. 
Scrap metal is rusty metal pieces that you can find around the forest. You can sell these at the shop to gain points. There isn't any other use for them. Their value will vary depending on their level. They are randomly generated around the map. Here is a list of all the scrap metal levels and the amount of points they give. That's going to be it for the guide. If this helped you, please do make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.